This sounds like something from a dystopian novel. A modern, developed nation known for its cutting-edge technology is forced to confront an unsettling reality and take measures to protect the food security of its citizens. Well, this isn't a novel. This is what happened in Japan in April. Let me give you a little background. This month, in response to the ongoing rice shortage, Japan enacted its first emergency food law since World War II. So this law grants new powers to the government to secure the food supply. And it's a measure unheard of in these modern times, especially for an industrialized, modern country. I mean, we're not talking third world here. So I have to ask, could we ever experience something like this? So let's explore what happened to cause Japan to do what they did. Part of it is weather, climate change, aging farmers, and a surging demand all come together in what we could say was the perfect storm. Japan's rice industry has been, uh, shall we say, feeling the heat, literally. There were record-breaking temperatures in both 2023 and 2024. And what I learned when I did a little research is heat, especially high heat, prevents the rice from properly forming the starch. It turns out a little chalky and it lowers the quality. And one of their prize rice, I'm probably gonna mispronounce this, Koshihahi Hikari, it was only 5% top grade. Well, usually there is 80%. So it was that much different. All because of hot weather. But it's not just the heat. You know, typhoons have been causing problems too. They had shanshan, which battered fields, causing physical damage, and it delayed harvest, and whole communities had to have time to recover. Global issues like climate change and adverse weather have created worldwide rice problems. But it's worse in Japan because do you know what the average age of a rice farmer is in Japan? My age, 69. That's right, that's the average age. So fewer people are stepping in to learn how to produce rice and harvest because it is hard work. And if the young people don't step in, production declines, and yes, there is a rice shortage. By 2024, it was kind of a tipping point for Japan. Prices had soared up to 55% from the previous year. That's right, 55% higher. And that made it the highest levels on record. So the government did something it hadn't done since 2011, and that was loosen the rules on accessing strategic rice reserves. They actually released 210,000 tons of rice. And it was the first time since 1995 that this release of rice was used because of market disruptions. Usually it's for crop failures, natural disasters. And one other thing happened, which, you know, after the pandemic, people wanted to travel. Well, and they got more travelers than ever before in Japan. So that meant there were more people sitting in restaurants eating rice. And that also caused part of the shortage. That sudden increase in demand caused approximately 100,000 additional tons of rice to be used. All because of people visiting Japan. Now, scientists in Japan are looking into uh, varieties of rice that are more heat tolerant, 
But one of the problems is, well, these, I'm not gonna say old farmers because, I mean, I'm old, but these elder farmers are set in their ways. They don't wanna try something different. They wanna use what they've always used for their rice variety. So that is a problem. It's gonna take time. And unfortunately, maybe they don't have the time. So from record-breaking heat waves, an aging workforce, and government policies, and booming tourism have all contributed to the ongoing rice shortage in Japan. But you can't help thinking, as Japan is grappling with their rice shortage, could other industrialized modern countries, such as the United States, also have a problem with food security. So again, I did a little more research and to my surprise, we no longer have the big grain reserves that we used to. Historically, we had several programs. Let me look at my notes here, such as the farmer owned grain reserve and the food security wheat reserve. And they were consolidated into the Bill Emerson Humanitarian Trust, short B-E-H-T, in 1998. And it was designed to hold up to 4 million metric tons of wheat, corn, rice, and sour gum. However, since 2008, this B-E-H-T has held only cash, no actual product. And this could be to our detriment in the future if there were crop blights, because you can't eat cash, right? And think about our problem recently with avian flu, right? That's forced the culling of millions of hens in the United States, sending egg prices really high. So yes, food systems are delicate and it can be a multiple of different reasons causing a disruption and food insecurity. But yes, it could happen in your homeland. So that is why it is so important to have your own emergency food supply. Don't depend on the government, depend on yourself. Store food, store water, so you're protected just in case. Thanks for listening. And as always, please share the knowledge.